It's time to open a new chapter from the Good Times Entertainment Tale of Horror series as this one was not produced by Golden Films, Jetlag, or themselves. And it's not the stupid Christmas tree again. Imagine a day without sadness and fear Where no one's a stranger but one Who knew there were so many branching paths to the good times hole? This truly is the most wonderful time of the year. An Angel for Christmas is a production by Bly Migakovsky and Phoenix Animation Studios, both of which are based out of Canada. Which means this movie is personally my fault and that both these companies are down the road for me because Canada is such a small place. An Angel for Christmas was originally released in 1996, which I'm pretty sure was the definitive year for cheap cartoons considering how many things I've covered that have come out in 96. This movie was part of what they called the Good Times Family Classics series, which is a title that certainly wasn't added later or anything. I mean, look at how well it perfectly tracks along as the book floats away in the intro. So what this series was originally called was the Bedtime Primetime Classics, which still appears in the intro briefly on the adventures of young Moby Dick before it quickly switches to the Good Time version as it fades out. And yes, they seriously made a movie about young Moby Dick. The cartoons in this series have a stylized look to them, opting for flat colors for the most part and thick lines for a bunch of the background elements, with some things having rather bizarre angles to them. It is simplistic in some ways, but honestly it's not that bad, and it does look much nicer than some of the messier looking tunes like Miracle and Toyland. I'm not saying that this is mind-blowing animation or anything, but at least it seems like they were trying for something even if this is pretty lazy in a few parts. Also, part of the gimmick of these cartoons was they're like a story being told, but instead of just having a narrator constantly tell you a character said something like in earlier Dingo cartoons, once in a while the transition to different scenes will get narration with parts of the story being shown on a book. Which is great because they don't have to animate those parts. So, An Angel for Christmas's tagline is Catch the Christmas Spirit, which I'm guessing they mean literally, since the story is about an angel. Dominating this small community was a Covert Millworks, a monstrous factory which employed almost everyone, and without which the town would cease to be. Cool, let's shut that factory down! This town doesn't deserve to exist. And that's exactly the way its owner liked it. The ruthless D.D. Covert. Well, I can't believe D.B. Cooper liked being in control. Humans never like having power. Whose money chest was the size of a truck, and whose heart was the size of a pea. So we're getting Scrooged in this story, are we? And what else would they be producing at the town controlling factory but... Slime? Are we gonna have Ebenezer Slimer here? Gotta say, this doesn't seem like the most efficient factory. I mean, there's gotta be some more convenient way to move turbines than this. What day is it, Bear? This guy's name is Bear? Alright. CHRISTMAS INTERRUPTING BEAR! And what's not going to happen in three days? Why, uh, it's Christmas, Mr. Coven. And do you know why? Uh, it's bad for business, Mr. Coven. Exactly. Yes, truly Christmas is the leanest time of the year for sales. This guy's the best businessman ever. For 25 years, I have canceled Christmas in Ironville. Seriously, this factory is able to cancel a holiday? That makes a lot of sense. And how exactly does old broken neck D.B. Scrooger enforce this? Why, he has his own personal enforcers, being General Santa and his death squad. Squads, which appears to be just three other guys. So clearly they've got the town on lockdown. You and the Christmas Patrol have done a fine job of seeing that Christmas never 
comes to wine, Bill. Seems like you're pouring a lot of money into making sure that the most money-making holiday doesn't happen in your town, knockoff Scrooge. I've never had a lollipop or sleigh ride in the park. I've never gone out fishing or played hopscotch for a lark. And also, this is barely a song, so I'm just wasting your time. But at least Chancellor Santa gets to roll his eyes three times during this. For Christmas is a humbug! Oh, he's like Scrooge. I didn't get that before. I hate this season so, with its merriment and singing. And let's not forget people being super hypocritical. And playing in the snow. That stuff is purple. That is not snow. Anyway, once Mr. Burns has finally done his little I hate Christmas song, we see a little girl beam into town via a single patch of falling snow. Holly for Christmas? Christmas? We don't celebrate Christmas here. Now go away. And because I don't celebrate Christmas, it's made me super rude. Holly for Christmas? Shh. Mentioning that word could get me in trouble. Is there no real law enforcement in this stupid town? Remember when I said this place shouldn't exist? Holly for Christmas? Look, Bobby, there's a poor girl selling something. So what? We gotta get home for dinner. Now that Snowden's reign of terror is finally over, I never have to care about Christmas again, Emery Elizabeth. Why is everybody ignoring her? I care so much, I truly understand these human emotions you creatures have. Who cares? But if she doesn't sell anything, she won't have any money for food. Who cares? Hi, I'm Mary and Matthew. This is my brother Bobby. Feel free to forget our names immediately. Hello, I'm Angela. Now look into my soulless eyes and see the terror of your end! No one wants Holly for Christmas. No wonder. Who's ever heard of Christmas? I'm afraid you're right. Who's ever heard of the thing we are currently talking about? This dialogue, it's too natural. Merry Christmas, Ian invites the disease-carrying Brad over for dinner, but Satan Claus knows the signs of Christmas popping up when he sees it. <laughs> Was it actually Poison Ivy that doofus shoved down his pants? Anyway, quite surprisingly, the little brat's parents are slightly less than thrilled when their kids show up with a bomb. I can't look after everyone who comes our way. I can't even look after you. This is only the second time we've met, daughter, and I trust it'll be one of the last. Where will she go? Don't worry. I'll be alright. Wait. Have a clump of dry bread. We could have at least cut you a slice, but this way it's less convenient for all of us. We shouldn't encourage the girl. She'll be dead soon enough. I'm sorry, children. Yeah, you sure are, Dad. Oh, crap. It's the red sky seasons of Christmas. Things are about to get super edgy. There's nothing I could do for her. It's freezing cold outside. Where will she spend the night? Hopefully six feet under. Shut up, you useless sack of crap! Anyway, the parents of the year don't notice their kids going right back out the door to follow bum girl into the woods. Jeez, you'd think they didn't really want their children or something. Hey, wow, they actually have pink pine trees growing around here. I'll stick with artificial ones, thanks. Let's hurry. But not that quick. <gasps> Why does that tree have a white outline around it? Doesn't make any sense. Speaking of sense, is that the star of Bethlehem? Is Jesus being born again? Again? Only two more days is all I have to keep this town from losing Christmas forever. Why was it okay for 25 years before this Christmas? It's useless. We'll never find her. Look! Could she have found a dumber place to sleep? Some wolves show up threatening to kill the little twerps, which isn't too likely to happen in reality, but always happens in stupid fiction stories, but luckily little bum girls are the wolf whisperers. Are you alright? We were so worried! Thank you for caring enough to find me. We're sorry about our father. I just wish either of us could put some actual emotion into this. We're sorry about our father. He's really not that way. He just acts that way. Which kind of makes him that way. 
Excuse me? Haven't you forgotten someone? Oh yeah, there's a talking wolf in this because... Because... They thought they needed an animal sidekick? It talks. Of course he does. Yeah, of course wolves talk. Let's not be idiots here. This is Wilfred. What's the matter, son? Wolf got your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny! Shut up! Where was I? Oh, yes. I was pointing out that you were leaving without inviting me along. I'm the only wolf that matters. Why the rest of my pack just disappeared into the woods? Who cares about them? He'd be no trouble. Honest. Okay, sure. I suppose we could get super rich off the talking wolf and move away from the stupid factory-controlled town. No, of course they wouldn't do that. Christmas Holly! Some despicable individual has dared to challenge me and bring Christmas back to Ironville. Why are these guys fighting over the holly? Do they just really want it? Maybe it just feels really great down their pants. Once I've found you, I'll give you a Christmas present you'll never forget. You sure like talking about Christmas for someone who doesn't want anyone to talk about Christmas. This is man's work. <sighs> That's what I call a good night's sleep. Oh man, I can't wait for some more zany wolf shenanigans. That's one for Bobby, and one for Marion. And one for me. And one for... <gasps> <laughs> what did the stupid wolf think would happen anyway? <laughs> and that's when they fell in love and created the first Christmas werewolf. Sounds dumb, but I'd watch that over this. It's delicious, Mrs. Matthew. And Wilfred likes it too. Why would he do that when he clearly just talked to the mother before this? Oh, whatever. We just couldn't leave Angela out in the cold. And the wolf? He's my friend. Of course. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just gotta roll with the stupidity. They have no place else to go. Well, the wolf probably does. Angela was happy that finally there were stirrings of the Christmas spirit in the Matthew household. Because the Christmas spirit equals her getting fed. Back at the factory, we see the slime shot again, but apparently this is kryptonite news. D.B. Scrooge's real plan is to rid us of that damn Superman. Just kidding, that'd be silly. What they really do is, uh, make whatever these are. Isn't it the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? The covet dynamic valvular flange. I don't think you're making flanges correctly there, dude. Especially when you seem to be making them out of either jade or slime. But, you know, the flange racket really had control of a lot of towns back in the day. Flange is what I live for. Well, that's the most pathetic thing I've ever heard, sir. Ho, 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 Mary, go kill yourself. Die, you! Any news on catching that villain who's trying to bring back Christmas? I have my patrol checking every house in Ironville. I'm so glad the Flange Company has total authority to do that. Covet thinks there's a conspiracy to bring back Christmas. Quiet! <laughs> Mentioning Christmas could get us fired! Yes, I sure do hate anyone saying Christmas, Christmas, Christmas! Christmas? <laughs> Will whoever did it please step forward? I did it. <gasps> the penalty for breaking a glanger is death! So they led him to the flange gas chamber. This movie is a sobering reminder of why we don't let flanges control our lives anymore. Then a bunch of freeze frames happen due to the miracle of Christmas laziness. Did you see someone selling Christmas holly? It was a young girl. A young girl? A young girl? I thought young girls were only fairy tales. The covet dynamic valvular flange at risk because of a young beggar girl? 
You know, I don't see how holidays actually negatively affect flange sales, sir. You know what? Neither do I. I'm an idiot. Bring her to me. That's some weird looking dog you got there. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a dog. He's a wolf. Yeah, right. Then let's see if your wolf can dodge this! These guys are about as subtle as Stephen King bullies. Glad a snowball is apparently a test for if this is a dog or wolf, though. But since it gets magicked back at him, I guess Bully Boy is the real dog. His name's Wilfred. And he's great at doll surprise! What are you doing in Ironville? I've come to bring you Christmas. Christmas? What's that? Imagine a day. Whoa, whoa, we asked for an explanation, not a song, lady. But I guess that's exactly what these bullies needed as their little Christmas song instantly seems to turn them all nice. It's the spirit of giving for one and for all. Who are you, the Three Musketeers? I'm evil again, your song failed. It's the patrol! Let's beat him! Does Santa's death squad actually beat children or something? I mean, all they're doing is standing around. They act like they're about to die when they see them. Fortunately for Bear, he recognized the town bully and was anxious to question him. Town bully? That's like the kid's official job title? Meanwhile, a sad Samuel returned home, dreading telling his family how his kindness had cost him a week's pay. But it's okay because his children not only brought Bum Girl back, but now they also have a wolf to feed. This would be a big dilemma if they ever really brought it up again. It's tame, they assured me. And who am I to question kids that bring a wolf home? Though she did apparently hear the wolf talk and see it eating with utensils at the table, so I guess she should be fairly certain that it's tame. The Christmas Nazis then show up with town bully the squealer and round up Angela to take her to their flange dictator. Sounds kind of stupid when you tell it like it is. D.B. Scrooger then interrogates Angela. Why do people live in this stupid town? The Christmas spirit. It isn't real. It's something you feel inside. Nonsense. The only things I feel are these. <laughs> I dive into my gold, but that's the wrong Scrooge! Or is it? Following orders, Bear took Angela to the Matthew household for her final goodbyes. So, she's to be executed? You'll have to leave now. Mr. Covet has ordered that you be gone from Ironville by sunset. Oh, she's just being kicked out of Stupidsville. What a punishment? Goodbye. I'll never forget you. Whoever you were. I'm leaving you here. I know you did what you had to. Here, I've brought you some scraps of food. Ah, evil Colonel Santa has a heart of gold. I can't wait for him to turn into Santa Claus at the end of this. Although that would seem to be where they're going with him, that never actually happens somehow. They just have a character who looks like Santa and never get him to dress that way. We better find shelter before nightfall. Maybe someplace with a hot bath and steaming food served on silver platters. Please try to remember you're a wolf, not the royal prince. Well, what's wrong with a little culture? I don't understand this wolf character. Then again, I don't understand anything about this story. I failed, Wilfred. I'll never bring Christmas to Ironville. You're giving up? Then it's you who's forgotten what Christmas is all about. Do you remember the very first Christmas? Of course. Then tell me the story. Good thing a wolf has to remind an angel what Christmas is about. And I know it's easy to forget that little bum girl is actually supposed to be an angel, but it's not like the title and cover of this movie are exactly very subtle about it. Anyway, Angela tells us the story of Jesus' birth through a bunch of still frames, which reminds her that she's got to try and force these morons to celebrate her holiday because hers is the only right way or something. Ironville needs Christmas, and I'm going to bring it back to them. Great! 
great! That's all I've got. Anyway, you want some cookie crisp? She's spending the night in an abandoned stable. Excellent. Yes, quite excellent. That we're being very blatant about the Mr. Burns influence on the character. Thanks to you, there'll be no Christmas in Ironville this year. <laughs> Does stupid old man go through these Christmas close calls every year? We must have it up and decorated in the town square by Christmas Eve. But there's only two of us. We can, we can help. help. Two of the bullies are good now, I guess. Who cares why? Anyway, let's force this holiday on everyone. Oh, no. Why did we think that walking on ice was a good idea in the first place? Ah! You're lucky the rope held. Not that lucky. Looks like Santa's gonna have to cut up, bitch. No! I can still save it. Or you could just cut down one of the other bunch of pine trees in this forest behind you instead of risking your life stupidly. Ugh! Help me! Well, we would help you, but the Prime Directive says your evolution is leading to your death, so we can't interfere! I'm slipping! <laughs> Luckily, Angela knew this tree was rotten, or else climbing a tree to try and save Bobby might not have made much sense here. Long live the king. Uh, uh, no! Glad Santa and his men are such monsters they weren't even gonna try to help here. Didn't see it with my own eyes. Someone saving another from death? Well, you can't have that without the Christmas spirit. What do we do now? We'll help you get a new one, won't we, men? So seeing bum girl not let this moron kid die is enough to make these guys say, ah, screw it, let's get fired? But they had to act fast before Dee Dee Covet could stop them. What's the stupid old man gonna do now that his death squad's a turned traitor? Flange them to death? You gonna burn that Christmas tree, Bear? Nope. I'm helping them put it up. What about Covet? Christmas is still canceled! It's time we stop worrying about him in fact, I don't know why we were ever worried about him. He's a stupid old man with a flange factory, and apparently even though there's been no Christmas in this town for 25 years, everyone still just had Christmas decorations ready to go. Yet, this one Santa squatter, for some reason, throws pork onto the tree. That's, uh, hilarious, I guess. Truly, it's the strong resolve of all these people that kept this Christmas band going for 25 years. I've been betrayed! Wow, he's still evil and the movie's almost over. This is gonna be some riveting character turn for him. Anyway, like most flange factories, they also control the power supply to the town because Mr. Burns or something. I don't know at this point. Pull this tree down at once or I'll close the factory! Then where will you be? <gasps> Such a well-kept secret. She couldn't have just done that a lot sooner. And the magic of Angel Christmas has made her socks match now. Impossible. What am I feeling? I've never experienced anything like this before. I think they call it wonder. That's it. Wonder. What a wonderful feeling. Get it? It's like a Christmas carol, but without any of the actual character arc. So the angel just bent his will. Kind of a terrifying ending, but if she is just gonna magic him, she could have done that 25 years ago and saved this town a bunch of nonsense. For you. And for you. And what can I give? An angel for Christmas? The most precious thing I have. My heart. Thank you. Fatality. Kind of a mess of a story, wasn't it? 
The character turns are just out of nowhere and they seem so easy it seems like the story could have been resolved within a couple minutes. Angela takes forever to reveal her obvious twist, which also just gives us a makes it easy solution to make their Scrooge stand-in suddenly turn good. It's like they wanted to do Scrooge but not tell any of his actual story and dial his villainy up to ridiculous levels. And I don't know why an angel needed a talking wolf as her sidekick. It's almost like that was kind of pointless. Like the entire story because the moron villain thought, hey, the holiday where people buy things for each other is bad for profits. All that was really needed was a common sense for Christmas. <laughs> I hadn't have seen her save that dumb kid with my own eyes, I'd have been a lot happier.